Well, thank you guys so much for coming, and um, we're going to uh, have a good time today. We're going to do some practicing later on after we uh, cover a few things first. Uh, but let's start with a word of prayer if you bow your heads with me. Loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your wonderful Sabbath day. We thank you so much for these individuals who have a desire to learn how to go door to door to meet our community and just bless our time this afternoon and um, help us walk away with a better, better understanding and an um, idea of how to reach our community, Lord. All this we ask in your name. Amen. So we're going to start, I want to start with the story of Abram, how God called Abram. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and, you, and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless yeah, did it go to the next one? Yes, it did. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all families of the earth shall be blessed. So what did Abram have to do to become a blessing to those around him? He had to leave his family, and not just his family, his hometown. Abram had to get out of his comfort zone. We are... We must get out of our comfort zone so that we can be a blessing to others. So he was required to get up, leave his home, and go mingle amongst people that, he, that were foreign to him, that he had no idea who they were. And that's what we must do. Then we look at Jesus when he sent the disciples out on the first missionary journey. He had a few instructions for them. He told them to go two by two. Uh, it says that they were given power over unclean spirits to heal all manner of diseases. That'd be pretty awesome, right? For us to be able to do that. Uh, effort was put forth in house-to-house -house labor. So what were they doing? They were going door-to-door. -door. Isn't that amazing? Uh, he said... Uh, and, and this comes from uh, Desire of Ages. He said, do or say nothing that would excite opposition and close the door from further labor. Accept the hospitality of those who welcome you with peace be to this house. And the final one is a little harsh. But shake off the dust from your feet of those who reject you. So what were the qualifications? Were they formally trained by the rabbis? Were they formally trained in the school of the priest? No. Who were they? Common people. Everyday, ordinary men. Just like all of us here today. We are just all ordinary men and women. And our only qualification is that Jesus has called us to minister to our community. Amen? And he promises us the Holy Spirit. That's all we need. Jesus has qualified us, and he gives us the Holy Spirit. And today we're going to go one, one step further, and we're going to do a little bit of training. So it's uh, a time to ask uh, questions, and hopefully you'll have a better idea of what to expect when we go out and uh, visit our community and go door to door. And uh, hopefully answer some of your questions and concerns and calm your nerves. Um, it's, it can be nerve-wracking, that first house you walk up to, um, if, you have, if you've never done it before, or even if it's been a while. So Jesus called us to minister to, to our community. So if we're called by Jesus to minister... Shouldn't we follow his method? Most definitely. Uh, ministry of healing. It says Christ's method alone will give the success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. 
He showed his sympathies for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them, follow me. Notice that? He didn't say, follow me first. He took care of their physical needs. And then he said, follow me. So as we go out into our community to meet people's needs, we must do it without an ulterior motive. Because if we go in the, into this situation, if we go door to door and we have an ulterior motive, guess what? The people are going to see right through it. They know. You're standing at their door. They're wondering, what are you trying to sell me? Or what denomination are you from trying to get me to come to your church? We must be there to meet their needs primarily First and foremost, that's what we're doing. We're taking Christ's method alone. And so through, it's not easy. It really isn't easy. And that's why um, this training is so important. By no stretch of the imagination am I an expert at this. But for the last month, I have been knocking on hundreds and hundreds of doors. And I've, I've learned on the job, basically on the job training. I've learned kind of what works, what doesn't work. What works here in Spirit Lake does not work in Post Falls, let me tell you what. (laughs) Even though the communities are very close, completely different dynamic, and we and I have to go to go to people in a different way, talk a different way, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, So through our VBS classes, as well as free events that aren't even related to religion, right? So we've had the emergency uh, preparedness. That was great. Then we had the sourdough. Sourdough is huge now. And then coming up here in June, uh, June 9th, I believe it is, what to do when the grid goes down. And when I go to someone's door and say, we're going to have a free class about what to do when the grid goes down, that gets their attention. Because a lot of people in this area want to be self-sufficient. There's a lot of homesteaders. There's a lot of people that do not want to rely on the grid, rely on on, um, society, the societal structure to provide for our needs. So that's a really huge thing. And and I think that is going to be a very successful meeting. I think a lot of people, and and I'm, I'm, I'm also really looking forward to that. And uh, another thing is Idaho sunshine. People look at me, and we're going we're gonna to hear a story later on in this presentation. Um, but people look at me like, you're telling me I can come get a root canal, teeth cleaning, haircut, chiropractic work, all for free. Yeah. And glasses. Yes. Are you serious? Yes. And that's such a huge thing because what are we doing? We are meeting their needs. And so all of these events are to bridge our community to us. In the evangelistic series, uh, uh, the evangelism cycle, it's the first step. And it's preparing the ground. Who here um, has a garden? Yeah. So what do you do? In the spring, you just say, I'm going to take these random seeds and throw them into my garden. What do you do first? You mend the soil, right? You prepare the soil before you plant. And so that's what all these events are doing is preparing uh, the soil. And then after that, going door to door, that falls under the second step of the evangelism cycle, which is the planting step. You can't reap if you don't sow. And you can't sow efficiently if you do not prepare Uh, your ground. And so we're going to watch a short video clip. The next stage in the evangelism cycle is plant. After we've done preparation, now we do planting. Planting the seed. In harvesting, you have to plant the seed. What does this look like in a church setting? It means planting the seed with spiritual conversations, planting the seed with the distribution of literature, planting the seed with media ministries. The questions that you need to ask yourself in this phase, and this may be over a three or four month period, How many of the church members are 
actively distributing literature. How many of the members are actively involved in sharing media uh, as a digital form of literature with people? Does the church have a social media presence to share with people? It's a little short clip, but this is what we're going to do at Door to Door Sabbath. This is planting or starting the process of planting. But it's only a very small component of the evangelism cycle, of this second step in the evangelism cycle. Uh, getting into the community, we're going to invite them to community events. We're going to see what their needs are. We have a survey that we're going to do. And most importantly of all, we will show them who we are and that we care. That is first and foremost what we need to do. Because they could care less what we know until they know that we care. They don't care about what we know until they know that we care. We have an amazing message. Three angels message. Jesus coming soon. He's coming real soon. But they don't care about that until we meet their needs and we show them who we are. That's why it's so important for this step to occur before an evangelistic series. Because if you don't sow, you don't reap. And so, at this point, I want to pause and ask a question that some of you are probably thinking in your minds. Why are we doing this? We have a Bible worker to do, to do this for us. It says, in the desire of ages... It says, there are many who need the ministration of loving Christian hearts. Many have gone down to ruin who might have been saved if their Bible worker? No. Their pastor? No, it says, might have been saved if their neighbors, common men and women who have put forth personal effort for them. Many are waiting to be personally addressed in the very family, the neighborhood, the town where we live. There is a work for us to do as missionaries for Christ. And if we are Christians, this will be our delight. So don't look to the Bible worker and don't look to the pastor to do what God has called each and every one of us to do. Each and every one of us, God has called us to do this. Pastors and Bible workers come and go as you all know very well. But it's you, the members that are here to stay. The community needs to get to know you, not just the staff of this church. So when we're out in the community, we're going to kind of transition here. So when we go out in the community, there's things that we should do, and there's definitely things that we should not do. And I've learned this the hard way. I've learned what not to do. Uh, by actually doing stuff that I wasn't supposed to do. So we're going to watch a, a, another video, and it's on the three A's of evangelism. I'd like to share with you the three A's of evangelism. Agree, approve, and accept. These are principles that can guide our conversations and interactions with other people. The first one is agree. Agree with people wherever you possibly can. We don't need to be people that are always trying to find differences. Yes, there are differences. Yes, there are uniquenesses. Yes, there are even peculiarities. But as much as possible, we need to agree with other people. In the book of Angels on page 141, it says, agree with people wherever you possibly can. Let them know that you have a love and a genuine concern for their souls. For example, if someone has just passed away and they say to you, I'm just looking forward to uh, seeing my, 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 my mother again. They're up there in heaven um, having a peaceful time. That's not the time to give them uh, a correction about their theological belief. But you can say something that does agree with them while not getting into the, the, the details. You can say, it's going to be a great day when we see our relatives again. You can agree with that part. It's going to be a great day when we see our relatives again. And you don't have to get into the disagreements there in that moment. You can do that another time. So the first principle is agree wherever you can. The second A after agree is approve. 
show approval as much as you can wherever you can. We see this in the life of Jesus when Mary comes and washes his feet with some very expensive perfume, instead of rebuking or making a point, Jesus approves and affirms the action that took place. We're told that our success will not depend so much on our arguments, will not depend so much on having the right doctrine, but it will depend on having the ability to find the way to people's hearts. And this happens when we, we approve and when we agree where we can consistently do so. I'm not talking about agreement for the sake of agreement, but it's agreement where you can consistently do so and follow that with approval where you can. The third step is acceptance. After agreement, after approval, we have acceptance. And that is to just be accepting of people where we can. Accept people for who they are. Jesus did this. He accepted and, and, and he was in fellowship with people that were sinners and publicans and the outcasts of society. Jesus accepted people. Acceptance does not mean that you agree with someone's decisions or actions, but what it does mean is that you're showing consistent positive regard to them. That you accept them as a person, that you accept them as a child of God. You know, I believe in the church, we should have high biblical standards for membership and arguably maybe even higher biblical standards for, for leadership in church. But for fellowship, fellowship needs to be open to everybody. And in some ways there should be no standards for fellowship. We should be accepting of all. The three A's of evangelism, the three A's of friendship are agreement, approval, and acceptance. How are you doing with all those three, with the people that you meet on a day-to-day -day and week-by-week -week basis? May we agree with people where we can consistently do so. May we approve of them where we can. And may we accept them with open arms like Jesus has done to us. So when you meet someone, it's not the time to have a theological debate. Like you mentioned, when you're, if you're talking to someone, they say, oh, uh, my uh, loved one is up in heaven. It's going to be so great to, to see them. It's not the time for you to quote Thessalonians and say, well, the, it, the Bible says the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. It's going to shut them down. That's, this is not the time to do that, to have a, a theological argument, we are not going to reach them if, if we do that. Um, the Holy Spirit needs to convict our hearts. That's not our job. We must let the Holy Spirit do his job, and we'll do ours. Uh, the next one is literature. So we are looking for short things like glow tracks or uh, small signs of the times, or I've seen out here there's some tracks that you guys have from White Horse Ministries and stuff. There's a lot of great stuff. But little, little stuff like that on basic topics. So unless you have established the relationship or you feel compelled to do so, when you first meet someone, that's not the time to give them a tract on the Sabbath or the truth about hellfire. Now, there, is, there are times that that is relevant. Um, something that uh, I used to do um, back in Southern California. Um, I was at a church, and what we did is we did glow in the dark. So Halloween, we went out and we handed out glow tracks on the truth about hellfire, the truth about um, state of the dead, and it was just very relevant for, for what's going on with Halloween and stuff at that point. And so a lot of people just threw them on the ground or whatever else, but it might have made a difference for some people. And what I found is when people discover what the Bible actually teaches, and if they have biblically based beliefs, once they accept one belief, there's going to come another one and say, they'll, because they'll say, well, what else is there that we have been following? What, do, what, what traditions of men have we been following as doctrines of God? And so, one step at a time, and, and, and at that point, it's not our job anymore. It's the Holy Spirit that's convicting and stuff. So, we want to have basic topics like on the love of God, forgiveness, hope. 
we need a lot of hope in our world today. People today don't have very much hope. Looking at the news and everything, something that will share the gospel, the good news with them. That is our first interactions with them. And so we need to take the same approach with handing out literature as we do with evangelistic series. So when we start an evangelistic series, what do we start with? We start with topics that are not so controversial. And then once we're building this relationship, we start moving on and on and on. And then we finally get to Spirit of Prophecy, Sister White, the Sabbath, State of the Dead, all that kind of stuff. And so after we start with the basics, then we move on to the heftier, um, heftier topics after we've laid the groundwork. The groundwork is so important. And so longer books, especially the writings from Ellen White, will come into play later. I found this, um, this quote from Ellen White. I thought it was really, really great. In public labor, do not make prominent and quote that which Sister White has written as authority to sustain your positions. To do this will not increase faith in the testimonies. Bring your evidence clear and plain from the word of God. A thus saith the Lord is the strongest testimony you can possibly present to the people. Let none be educated to look to Sister White, but to the mighty God who gives instructions to Sister White. In our world today, there's, there's a very negative sentiment towards Seventh-day Adventists. And I'm seeing that a lot in Post Falls. I've actually stopped telling them I'm from the Post Falls Seventh-day Adventist Church. I don't do that anymore. Because many people say, oh, and they don't want to take anything from me. Guess what? They think we're a cult. And they believe Ellen White is their cult leader. It's not true. But that is the sentiments of our world. And so we need to prove them wrong. We need to show them that we are biblically based Christians that follow God's word first and foremost. And then once we lay that groundwork, then we'll introduce them to Ellen White. I love Ellen White. I read Ellen White every day along with the Bible. It is such a huge blessing. But right away, when we're laying the groundwork, we need to work up to that so that they will come to that conclusion themselves by introducing them to the Ellen White planting method. I did that uh, actually yesterday uh, to someone that was really into gardening. I didn't say anything about that. She was a prophet or she received a vision about how to plant fruit trees to get a better yield. I just told them that we use the planting method and it worked and it works great. And I said, look it up. And so, for individuals like that, they'll learn on their own, like, wow, how in the world could this lady with no education know this? God sent her vision while she was in Australia. This is how you plant trees. Next, we need to meet people where they are at. And this title of this story is probably making you wonder, making you really interested. A story, it's a true story of a flyer, a trailer park, and a six-pack of beer. Yes, I said a six-pack of beer. So a few weeks ago, I was door knocking at a uh, mobile home park in Post Falls. And on that day, I was getting frustrated because the printer at the church was not printing. I have, uh, I have a flyer, a uh, Who Are We flyer, and you guys are going to see an example of that here in a little bit. And I was so frustrated because the printer was not printing out this, this flyer correctly. It was in color. It's a, I think it, it's a nice, clean-looking flyer. But it just came out just not looking good. And I'm like, I cannot give this out to people. And I, I, I never go out unless I have something to hand to someone. Because even if someone doesn't want to talk to you, 98 or 99% of the time... They will take something if you give it to them. I've seen this. Now a handful of people just have, have rejected it, but vast majority of people will take it. So I was trying to print it out. I was trying to fix the printer. I was cleaning the printer heads and all this kind of stuff. And I was at this for a while and I was getting so frustrated. And I said, forget it. 
I'm going to just take some glow tracks and I'm going to take the Idaho Sunshine Flyer and I'm just going to go out. I'm not even going to talk. Not, I'm not even going to mention that I'm from a church or anything. I'm out there, Christ's method alone, telling them about Idaho Sunshine that will meet their physical needs. And so I went from door to door and some people uh, answered and some people didn't. And so I left the flyer in a clear plastic sleeve with a glow track in there on their front door. And so I came to the last trailer. And there was these two guys sitting out on a, on a picnic table in their front yard, smoking and drinking beer. And so they asked me what I was out doing. And I, I gave them a flyer. And I told them about Idaho Sunshine. And they're like, OK, yeah, hey, come on over, join us. And I was probably there for about an hour or more talking, talking to these two guys. And so the older guy, he started asking me triggering questions. I found out that he was trying to test me, asking me tough questions about Scripture and the Bible and everything from the fall of Satan all the way down to... Man, there was so much we talked about that day. And then after a while, he said, I'm really impressed. He says, no one, no one has ever come to my door before and been able to answer all these difficult questions from a biblical correct perspective. And he said he's had several LDS come to his door. They don't have good explanations. And I told him, hey, it's not me. <laughs> it's God. God has given me the memory that I do. I can't remember names, but I can, I can remember random, obscure history that is relevant in my preaching and Bible studies. And I said, it's, it's all God. It's not me. We, we need to always be humble. And so, then I asked him, I said, uh, do you want to do Bible studies? He said, nah, I don't want to do Bible studies. But if you're, if you're ever in the area again, stop by any time and we'll talk more about the Bible. He said no. But he said anytime. It's an open invitation. Anytime I want to go to his house and we can start talking more about the Bible. How amazing is that? And I'm going to go back there again. I was there the other day, and I didn't see him sitting out front, and something told me, not now. And if we pray, the Holy Spirit will give us those, those cues. Go talk to this person. Go say this. Give them this tract. Whatever it may be, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. So what would have happened... If I would have led with, you know, smoking and drinking is bad for you. How drastically different would that conversation have gone? He would have kicked me out. And maybe if I was walking through the area and you saw me, he would have said, might have said, get out of here, man. I don't want to listen to any of your stuff. It's true that smoking and drinking is, is, is bad for you. But that's not the primary focus. We must bring them the gospel. That's what it is. Smoking, drinking, all those bad habits, Jesus will handle later on. We just must, we, we must share with them the love of Jesus. And times have changed, even especially after, the, after COVID in the last few years. Times have changed, and so we need to change the way we do door-to-door -door ministry and the way we do evangelism. What worked in the 1800s, the 1900s, is not going to work in 2024. We need to meet the people's needs and, and meet them where they are at. These two guys sitting there, they needed the free health care. And then I shared Jesus with them. And so they gave me an open invitation to come back. And so 
Are you seeing how important it is for us to be very intentional about what we do and what we say when we're ministering to our community? Can you see how important it is? And so we're going to watch a, um, another video, and it's going to give us a few tips how to intentionally converse with a stranger to move from mundane things like the weather to sharing our love with Jesus, uh, of Jesus with them, because that's ultimately what we want to do. All right, so what I want to share with you is something that personally has really benefited me when I'm having conversations with people. And what it is, it's an acronym, it's a word, but it's an acronym. Um, so it's topics. T stands for today, O stands for occupation, P stands for person, I stands for interest, C for current events, and S is for sharing. So whenever I've started a conversation with somebody, um, and you know, I don't know them, but I'm able to use this to just follow a, a flow of reasoning with them. So I'll start off by asking them how their day is. So I'm with today right now. How's your day been? What are you up to? And they may ask me those questions back and I have to be prepared to answer them. So keep that just as a principle as we go through this. Anything you ask, be prepared to answer as well. Then I'll go on to occupation. What type of work do you do? How long have you been in that job? What's the industry like, etc. And then I'll move on to Pete, the person. Do you enjoy that job? Um, do you live in the area where the job is? Or, and I may ask some other questions about them as God impresses me to ask. And again, I'm also prepared to answer those questions too. Then I get to these last three areas that I really enjoy and it's finding out what their hobbies and their interests are. So we're in talking about the interests right now. What else do you like doing? Um, how long have you been doing some of those things for? Why do you like doing those hobbies that you do? And then I'll move on to current events. I may transition over and just say, you know, even though you enjoy doing all of those things and you've got a great job, and even though today may be a nice day, or if it's raining, it's raining, whatever it may be, but we're living, we're all living in the same country, or you may be talking to someone on the phone, whatever it may be. But we, we start talking about what's happening in the world today. We all know where we are right now, 2022, heading on over to 2023 and the years as they roll on. We're in an energy crisis right now. We see wars that are taking place in the world. There's some serious current events taking place around us that we've all got questions and we're looking for answers. As we're looking for these answers, I then transition to share my own personal testimony. Now, a personal testimony in a short way can be shared in three sections, where I was before I found Christ, how I found Christ, or how he found me, and what I'm doing with Jesus now. So I might say, you know, before I was with Christ, I was in a really dark place. He found me, he changed my life, and my life with him now, it's been amazing. I, I may tell him some stories about things I'm doing with people around me, but then I'd like to leave them with something. And in those moments, I like to leave them with a glow track. These are really good glow stands for giving light to our world, and on the back there's contact information, whatever it may be, and I'll hand it to them. And I'd also ask them, if it's possible, can we keep in touch? You never know your church or your small group or you yourself may be doing things that can meet the needs of their very own interests. So if you're able to do that and leave them with something, make connections with them, then you can continue the conversation at a later time. I really, really hope that this helps you in making conversations with strangers for the first time. God bless you all. So that's a little bit long of a acronym, but I want to go over, go over it. So start with something basic about today. How's your day? Whatever it is. Occupation. Talk about them as a person. Interests. Current events. And then sharing. And I really like how simple this, how they broke down the sharing into three simple, three simple parts. Because a lot of people, a lot of people have a great story. They have a great testimony, but they say, I don't know how to give it. All you got to do is where you were before Jesus, how you found Jesus, and where you are now with Jesus. It can be as, as simple as that. And so these are some... Um, this is something that you can use when you're going door to door. 
but most likely you're not going to have enough time uh, to get, get through all these, all these um, different things. But this is a first interaction. Did you guys know that it takes seven to nine interactions for someone to start trusting you? Seven to nine. It's not a one and done. This last week, I spent my week going and going to houses that I've already been to. To have that second interaction. Seven to nine and uh, so it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. But this is a really long acronym, and Lauren came up with a, another great one. So if you can come up and, and, and share it, it's a lot shorter. Yeah, that is a good uh, acronym. But in my line of work, we also try and come up with acronyms. So I would encourage you guys to come up with your own acronyms too. So one that um, I use in my work is FORM. So I kind of modified that to be in this circumstance. And so it's just FORT. The first one, and a lot of them are very similar, but it's just a four letter. And most of the time when you're gonna have a short interaction with someone, you don't have time to go through all those either. So feel free to come up with your own, but Fort family. So like, let's say you're at somebody's door. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, you have kids. Oh, that's wonderful. How old are they? Okay, that can give you a transition to, by the way, we have VBS coming up, you know, something to give them. Uh, second one, occupation, just like he talked about. You know, oh, no, what do you do? The fourth one are recreation, just like interest. What do you like to do? What do you do for fun? What do you guys uh, do on the weekends? And then uh, T, testimony, just like he said, testimony. And I would say that you don't always maybe even have the time to go through those three steps. If it's just a first interaction, your testimony part might just be something that God did for you that week. You know, you know what? I just wanted to tell you this, that God did this for me. And then they may ask questions. That may lead to a more in-depth conversation where you actually have the opportunity to tell your whole testimony. So um, feel free to come up with your own acronym, but FORT was mine. <laughs> Thank you. The next one, don't be different for different sake. Or um, Calvin Kim, a few months ago, uh, during the afternoon session, I laughed so hard when I heard this. He said, let's don't be weird. So don't be different for different sake or cutting to the core of it. Let's not be weird. Paul says that he is all things to all people. To the weak I became as weak that I might win the weak. I became all things to all men that I might by all means save some. So this doesn't mean that we change who we are or compromise our faith. This means you change the way you act. I'm not going to sit down with my new friend at the trailer park, open up a brewski and, and light up a cigarette. I'm not going to do that. But I'm not going to act overly religious, thinking that that will somehow be a good witness to that individual. It will just completely turn them off. But I'm not, going to I'm not going to hide it. Because when he asked me, he said, who is putting on this Idaho Sunshine event? I said, it's, it's sponsored by the Seventh-day Adventist Churches of North Idaho. And so I had already earned his trust. And then that's when he started talking about religion. I didn't hide it, but I, that wasn't the first thing that I did. I didn't hit him over the head with super conservative religious. I was just, I was meeting him where he was at. And I, I wasn't trying to act different um, just because I wanted to be different. Next, be natural. And when you're out there doing the survey, you're going to have, um, we're going to hand out this survey in a bit. And it actually has kind of a script, how to introduce yourself, how to get their name. When you get, you'll be surprised how many people will actually give you their name. And... Um, so when you're, when you're going to the door, don't just look down and, and read it mechanically. You want to um, make it, try, to, try to memorize it and make it flow uh, so, it's, so it's not uh, just mechanical. Um, also, if, when you're going in pairs, when you go to the door, make sure you decide who's going to take lead when you go before you get to the door. And make sure you keep chit-chat to a minimum. Because guess what? Especially 
when someone has one of those ring doorbells, a lot of people have those, a lot of people. As soon as it senses motion, guess what? It starts taking video and audio. So if you are having a full-blown conversation at their door and they see that on their phone, it's going to be really awkward for them to come to the door when you're having a full-blown conversation. So we want to remove barriers as much as possible. Next, read body language. Body language is so important. If someone is standing at the door holding a baby, holding back a dog from trying to get out, or two dogs, this has happened to me before, don't keep them for a few minutes. Don't, don't try to go through the survey. Just uh, give them a flyer and wish them a good day. You want to make sure that first interaction is a positive one. Because remember, that's the first touch out of seven to nine plus. For some people, it can be less. For some people, it will need to be more. And then you just wish them a good day and go your separate way. That's it. doesn't matter if you don't get their name. If you don't get any information from them, that is completely fine. Because that is only the first interaction. Um, then finally, I want to end with how to give Bible studies. Because Bible studies often go hand in hand with door knocking. And so it's very important uh, to, to know how to give a Bible study. And it can be as easy as handing them a, uh, a Bible study guide. Or it is as advanced as making your own Bible study guide yourself. So we have the first one. This is pretty easy. You drop off a, a Bible study with them. So and I'll, I'll show this more to you here in a second. But in your door knocking kit, you'll have the first Bible study, which is very basic. It goes over how some basic prophecies in the Bible pr prove the validity of God's word. Uh, is there anything left you can trust? And for many people that aren't religious at all, they have, they may be heard of Moses and a few big characters. Yeah, I've heard of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, he died on the cross and he did a bunch of miracles and stuff. But this is a good starting point for people because it introduces them to prophecy on a very basic level. And it shows them that it, it's God's word is true. And so you can give that to them if, if they say, well, I don't want to make an appointment right now or I don't want to do it in person. You just give them that. And then tell them, I'll be back next week, and I'm going to give you the next one and see if you have any questions. And if you can't make it next week, I'll drop it off next week. Or another church member will drop it off next week. Whatever we have to do to get that study. The next is one-on-one -on -one Bible study. And this is very simple. When you're going through uh, the, the Bible study, read the question, read the Bible verse, read the answer. You don't need to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to have a, a bachelor's or a master's degree to do uh, a, a Bible study. And guess what? The Holy Spirit's going to guide you. You will be pleasantly surprised that when you are doing your study, that you will remember, ah, oh, I remember this, this morning in my devotional, I read this. It's amazing how God will, the Holy Spirit will bring something to your mind that you recently read. It's just absolutely amazing. Next one is the easiest one, and it doesn't get easier than this. You can invite your friends and neighbors to your house and put a DVD in your uh, DVD player. It used to be cassette tape. There was a, 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 church, a, a head elder at a previous church of mine. He said there was this one man he knew that brought so many people to the Lord. And he asked him, what's your secret? He said, this is what I do. He's like, what's that? Putting a VHS tape in and hitting play. It's so easy. So you can show a video like Thunder in the Holy Land or, or some other engaging DVD, uh, the evangelistic series you can buy on DVD from uh, White Horse Media. That's what we just had at uh, Post Falls. And it was a very excellent series. Uh, Rob Knott uh, presented that. And so you can't get any easier than that. And if you want a little bit um, 
more, I don't want to say more of a challenge, but if you, you want to go above and beyond that, you can make your own study guide from scratch. All you need is a, 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 co a concordance, a topic, and then think of some transitional statements between your different Bible verses. And if you guys want to learn more about that, um, we can do a training at a later time uh, to go in more depth on how to do a Bible study. So this is, this is the door knocking kit. And so what it is, is you have, you'll have your map and the town will be split up into quadrants. And so each quadrant will consist of 30 to 40 to 50 houses, something you can, you can knock in, uh, in about two hours. It'll have a map for reference as, lo as well as um, the, the houses, the house uh, numbers, the addresses. You'll have this uh, questionnaire which um, I'll be passing out in a second. And then I always make sure I have right here uh, flyers attached right here. Um, so I can very easily, if someone's like, yeah, no, no, I'm not interested, pull up, here you go. And they'll most likely take it, even if they don't want to um, stay there and, and listen to your, your um, whole, I guess, whole spiel. Inside, you'll have other... Um, questionnaires. You can store your questionnaires in here. And this just comes in handy when it's windy outside because I've had to chase some Bible studies and stuff down the road. And so you'll have all of this neatly in here, an extra pen, all that kind of stuff, what you need to, uh, to do the Bible studies or to, to go uh, door knocking. And I would suggest when you go up to the door, do it by memory. Tuck it right here because when you go up, they're like, what are they trying to sell me? Are they trying to evangelize me? Whatever it may be. If you tuck it like this. and Hi, I'm Matt from the Spirit Lake Seventh-day Adventist <laughs> Church. Just out in our community getting to know people. And it, it, it just comes out a lot smoother. So any, any questions or comments first? I don't want to be negative And I uh -huh. don't want to put the negative first. But you started out. If this doesn't work, shake the dust off your feet. Mm -hmm. How do we apply that today? What does it mean? I can understand the disciples shaking because mm -hmm. they're walking in the dirt. Mm -hmm. They ain't got no socks on. I can understand that. But shake off your feet. Shake off the dust. How do you apply that today? Yeah, so um, I have a sermon uh, on Matthew chapter 18, and in that sermon, it, it talks about what you should do, uh, how to approach someone with conflict. You go one-on-one, -on -one, then if that doesn't work, then you, then you bring a few common friends, and then next it says, bring it to the church. A smaller group of people, house church was relatively small back then. And then it says, if none of that works, treat them as the Gentiles. And so when I first read that, my brain went to probably what a first century Jew would think. Okay, Gentile, tax collector, we kick him out. But that's not what Jesus is saying. He's not saying kick the people out. It just says treat them like you would a, a, a non-believer to try to reach them. And so when we're, we're shaking off the dust off our feet, it's not that we're saying, well, forget them. It's, I need to figure out how to reach them differently. Because there's, there's people, as I'm out door knocking and stuff, some people say, well, I'm good where I'm at. I don't, I don't want any of your literature. I don't want any of it. Um, some people get really mad, yell at me, slam the door in my face. I haven't gotten threatened yet, but I'm sure North Idaho, that will come eventually. Um, it, it, and I take a note and I say, okay, they gave back this. And I need to try to reach this individual a different way, not harassing them. And so yesterday, I, um, I strategically went to, to repeat houses. And there was this one house. People said, we're not believers. We don't want anything. So I just left an Idaho Sunshine flyer at their door. That's it. I didn't knock on the door. Or anything like that. So if their needs are going to be met that way, it just, a no is not always a no, just like the guy at the trailer park saying, well, no, I don't want to do a Bible study, but come by anytime. So 
I don't believe that we should just kind of move on and say, well, we can come back. Maybe in five, six months or something like that. Um, or pray to God, soften this person's heart. Or another person's house, I went there the first time and the guy was really mad that I knocked on his door. He didn't want to hear anything I said. He didn't want to flyer, nothing. And so I left. Yesterday I was walking around him and his wife were backing the boat in. He was in the car, she was outside. I went and I said, hello, introduced myself and handed her a flyer. She said, oh, thank you so much. So we just have to, when, when we have a negative interaction. Well, he was working. He was working, and, uh, and who knows how religious he is. He could have been an atheist. He could have just been, woke up on the wrong side of the bed. We don't want to completely write them off. But we need to pray that, that the Holy Spirit will, will give us a, a different end, and we have to think of different ways of ministering to those people. Sometimes when, when you offer something to someone mm-hmm. and they refuse it, you feel offended. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe that's just me. I don't know. But I, I need to distance myself from that because yeah. it's not me. They're not rejecting me. Mm-hmm. They're rejecting Christ. Yeah. Really. Yep. So I'm wondering if that also what it means to wipe the d- dust off your feet is don't mm-hmm. let it. Yeah. Take it personally. It's really mm-hmm. Christ they're rejecting. Yeah. And it's really easy when you're out there. It's really easy to get down in the dumps, like discouraged. In, 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 in post falls, to use the soil analogy, it's very rocky, hard dirt, like the like the literal dirt there. Um, and I've I've gotten discouraged, and then I've I've the next day I come up here and I door knock, and then I I meet um, a wonderful lady that has a, a little bit of a connection with our church. Um, I think she's come once or twice, and uh, she's brought her neighbor who said, well, I'm not really looking for a church. I'm good where I'm at, and now he, he comes and visits, and the door has been opened. So that lifted my spirits like, oh my goodness, okay, and then, and then I met this guy, uh, these two guys down in Post Falls at a trailer park, and I just got really excited, and so we just can't let the devil get us down. He'll do that. He'll definitely do that. One thing that I've been wondering about is um, I read, been reading through a Christian service, and in there it said that we shouldn't wait to become friends before we share the present truth, like the Sabbath soon coming. Mm-hmm. And so I'm trying to figure out how to balance that with, yeah. you know, becoming friends, because that's important. You know, people mm-hmm. don't trust you, but at the same time, I've read stuff like, you know, you go out and you you share Mm -hmm. present truth. You know, you don't have time to build really strong friendship with everybody. So how do you uh, balance that? Yeah, so I think a a big thing is ask the Holy Spirit to impress on you. Because someone might only be ready for the basic, basic, like the love of Jesus but someone else could be wanting the Sabbath, like needing to hear about the Sabbath. There's an individual that came uh, from the community to the Post Falls Church. Absolutely amazing. She watched a, a video about um, this guy that used to be a Satanist and everything. And, and he said that um, every single church, and I, I, haven't, I haven't watched this. This is what she's told me. We're, we're, it's three and a half hours long. I haven't finished watching it. Uh, but she said that, in this video, this guy who was a Satanist who actually talked to Satan in everything, it's pretty dark, he said that in every single church, Satan has someone in the higher-ups. And that scared me to death. And then he, all, then, he, then he said, the church that Satan hates the most is the Seventh-day Adventist church. And so she said... Okay, I'm going to go find a Seventh-day Adventist church. <laughs> and that's not the first time at the church that I was at before Post Falls at Coeur d'Alene. A lady came and she's like, I've been convicted of the Sabbath. I want to learn about Mark of the Beast. So I wasn't going to be like, okay, let's, can you trust the Bible? No, she was ready for it. She was ready for it. And there's people, it's amazing I didn't knock this lady's door in Post Falls. 
I have never met her. It wasn't because of me. It was because of the work of the Holy Spirit. So the groundwork that someone else has laid, you're going to build on. And the groundwork that you lay, someone else is going to build on. And we must figure out that, ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Because we can't, we can just look at someone and, and, and judge them by their outer appearance. We don't judge them by who they are. We cannot read their hearts like God. We, we can't see the pain and the anguish and all the bad stuff that's happened in their lives. They may just be really rude and slam the door or say, get out of here because you're going to get a face full of rock salt if you don't. But we, we, don't, we don't know. And so it's the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit says to do something, sometime, numerous times I felt like the Holy Spirit saying, do this. And I say, well, no, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm out with family today, and I didn't do it. And I felt really bad that I didn't do it. And it makes me so sad that I didn't take that opportunity. And so we just need to take that opportunity. If God says, you need to tell them the present truth, they're ready for this, then do it. If they're ready for Ellen White and the state of the dead and, and the doctrinal view of hellfire and, and sanctuary, if they're ready for that, you, you won't know. But God does. God knows what people he's put in this, other, this person's life to prepare the groundwork. And so what I'm saying is, is not just blindly going out and just handing out like, like to the public, like, hey, you know that Sunday is the mark of the beast and Sabbath is the seal of God and you should be worshiping on Sabbath, not Sunday. That's all correct. That's, that's, that's biblical. That's what the Bible tells us. But that individual's not ready for that. But some people, they're ready. And, and glow tracks and stuff like that, um, I've been in contact with Glow Amazing Facts and Discover Bible School because when we hand out those tracks, guess what? There's a phone number on the back, and if someone wants Bible studies, they call Glow. Then Glow lets us know. Oh, that rhymes. My goodness. And, and then we can follow up with them. So even if someone else in a different, someone could be on vacation on an airplane and hand a Glow track to someone, and someone that lives in Spokane or here in Coeur d'Alene. And they call and they say, I want Bible study. Even though we didn't have that first connection, they've already had that, that, that first connection. And so some people are just primed and ready, like, I'm ready for the Sabbath and let's dig into Daniel and Revelation. That's what the lady at Coeur d'Alene, she wanted to do. So I didn't go through all the, the basic stuff. We jumped into Daniel and Revelation and we dug deep into it. And she absolutely loved it. And now she's doing Bible studies with her friends. And just a comment real quick before the next question. I think that the questionnaire or anything that you give is really just a bridge as a conversation mm -hmm. starter. Because what matters is you getting that, that conversation mm -hmm. to build that relationship. So it's not that you always have to use a yeah. questionnaire. It can be a way to get interest for bridge events. But it can also just be a way to say hi and start the conversation. Yeah, I was going to say that if you have an event, you want to introduce the event. Mm -hmm. And uh, if in that conversation, you may have more, more things that come up. If you don't have anything to hand out, you can ask the questions. But I think maybe, Matt, you found that sometimes they go flat. Mm -hmm. You don't get much. Yeah. But if you have something for them, mm -hmm. you're not trying to sell them anything, not take anything from them, just for them that may interest them, you'll find a lot more ways into, their, into the conversation than go on to other things. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if we can, we can just look through this. And so this is, this is just something I've honed. Um, hello, my name is, and if you're going out, you can introduce both people. Hi, my name is Matt. I'm from one of the local churches. This is what I, uh, this wording I use in Post Falls because they're very, when they look, a lot of people like, oh, you're Adventist. Um, but here, I, I'll just say Spirit Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, and your name is... And I've only maybe had, out of a few hundred houses that I've done this, maybe five or six that just stand there like, wouldn't say anything. Okay, well, here's a flyer. So they'll, they'll give you 
their name. And then to make sure you remember the name, nice to meet you and repeat their name and say in your head. I'm horrible with names, so this is really hard for me. I have to remember this because it's important to um, take notes of it. Um, and so then at a later time, if you follow up with them, hey, Joe, uh, good to see you again. I don't know if you remember me, so on and so forth. So getting pe people's names is really important. So, and your name is? Well, nice to meet you, John. Um, I am, uh, we're out in the community getting to know people. I used to have something that says, oh, we're out in the community. We want to assess the needs, so the ministry. And then people are just like, you're talking too much, basically. Um, we're out in our get community getting to know people, getting to know you. And then I used to ask, do you have, a, do you have a, a second to answer a few questions? No, 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 I don't want to do any surveys. But I've learned if you just say, we're out in the community getting to know people, if you take out uh, this, this flyer on the front, it's, who are we? So even if I don't have anything about events, I can still give them a flyer that tells them who our church is. And on the back, we have what they would be interested in. Because I found that if I'm just reading stuff off, they're like, eh. So I learned if you say, we're out in the community getting to know people, are there any events that you would like to, to see? Um, on here I said, we like to offer free classes and services that will benefit our church, our, our, our community, and would like to know what things you might be interested in. These are some of the interests of your, of your neighbors. So it's not literally the neighbors, but these are some of the events. And, and this, this is different for every single church. These are some of the interests that uh, we have here in, in Spirit Lake. And there's different interests uh, in, in Post Falls. Um, and then a lot of times I just get that far. Um, if you feel like it's a, a good opportunity, you can ask, do you want to receive Bible studies dropped off at your house? Um, would you like to receive an email or text message about upcoming events? And if you memorize this stuff and it's more fluid, you're more likely to, the person's not going to say, oh, it's another survey. I don't want to do a survey. It's, oh, okay, this is a conversation. They're asking me questions. And we, I have had a few people say, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm, I go to real life. I'm, I'm good with my faith. I, I'm good where I'm at. But yeah, yeah, please tell, let me know if you guys are going to do a sourdough class or a, a food preservation or, or whatever, whatever it may be. And then prayer. And, and I don't usually get through all of these very often because usually they're going to shut the door. So sometimes it's, it's hi, I'm Matt from the Spirit Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church getting out to know people. Do you, are you interested? In, no, 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 I'm not interested. Okay, well, we're doing this a free event. Um, what to do when the grid goes down um, event? And that's usually, especially in this area, oh, okay. Yeah, I want to check that out. And so you give that to them, even if you don't get their name or anything like that, and they're just closing the door, just hand it to them and go. Even if the person yells at you, I have a good day and hand it to them. Uh, so let's go ahead and end with a word of prayer. And if anyone wants to stick around and ask any questions or talk some more, you can. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for all that you do for us. We thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day that we could come together. Even though it's a small group, Lord, you say that when where two or more is meeting, you are there, Lord. And so we just ask that you just bless us, bless our church, and um, bless all the churches, Lord. You're coming back very soon, and we need to make sure that we're engaging our community in meaningful ways and witnessing to them, Lord, and uh, meeting their needs first and foremost, and then telling them, follow Christ. We thank you so much for all that you do for us. All this we ask in your name. Amen.